Hi, this week on the Heroes, Villains, and Sidekick show, we'll be taking a look at the first villain, not from a comic book, but from a movie. The villain we'll be learning about this week is the Gunslinger from the 1973 sci-fi classic, Westworld. And that's what we'll be doing on the Heroes, Villains, and Sidekick show. We'll be learning and talking about the origins and backstories of heroes and villains throughout the comic book universe and pop culture. We'll look at both popular characters and obscure characters you may have never heard of, but I think you'll dig. Now, for me, Westworld is one of those classic sci-fi movies that I go back to often. It's one of my favorite weekend lazy flicks. For me, it's right up there with Logan's Run, Soylent Green, Silent Running, and Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And yes, I totally wanted to do this episode because I've been really getting into the new Westworld series on HBO. And it's even really based on this movie, not only that, obviously, the title and the premise, but in the TV show on HBO, they allude to the disaster that happened 30 years ago. So the HBO show is actually cementing it in the timeline of the old 70s movie. Now, of course, since we're going to be talking and going over some of the plot and the characters of the 1970s Westworld movie, there will be spoilers in this episode. There will be no spoilers about the HBO show, but if you have a chance to watch it, I would really recommend it. It is just so far. I've only seen the first two episodes, but it is a really, really cool show. So let's get into the classic 1970s Westworld and learn about this week's villain, the Gunslinger. Westworld was written and directed by novelist Michael Crichton and was released in 1973 and was shot in only 30 days. Now it starred Yul Brenner as a lifelike android in a futuristic western themed amusement park where guests could come to live out their fantasies paying $1,000 a day. Main characters Peter Martin, played by Richard Benjamin, a first time park visitor, and his friend John Blaine, played by James Brolin, are the human visitors to the theme park Delos the theme park of the future. Now, Dallas didn't just have Westworld, but it also had Medieval World and Roman World. But as you may have guessed by the title, we spent much of the movie in Westworld, where we pass through some of the other lands and even visit the control center of Dallas once the problem with the androids starts getting bad. Now, before everything hits the fan, Brolin and Benjamin are having a great old time, brawling, drinking, and of course, sleeping with robo-prostitutes. Early on, they have a run-in with the gunslinger. Now, this is the character played by Yul Brenner. Now, in these run-ins, the two repeatedly gun down the gunslinger. See, the guest guns are real, but they only fire on something with low body heat. They only fire on cold-blooded androids, so humans are safe. The battles with the gunslinger almost become a joke, and they always just shoot him up, and then he comes back the next day, and it happens again. So we not only get to see the action that's going on in the theme park, but we're also taken behind the scenes into the lab where the androids are built and maintained. And it's there that we learn the park is experiencing many more central processing failures than normal. We see this start to affect the park on a small level when James Brolin's character is actually bitten by a snake while in the Badlands. This is not supposed to happen. Guests are never to be harmed. Things go rapidly downhill from there. The next minor infraction is that a guest's sexual advances are denied by a pleasure robot. And then things really get bad in the medieval world, where a guest is killed by the Black Knight. And we're going to take a quick break from our story and hear from our sponsor, Discount Comic Book Service, DCBService.com. Now, this is a service where you order your comics. They come minimum 40% off. Now, I've been using these guys for years, early 2000. Get my books every time in perfect shape. You can either go to the site and you can order through their uh, through their website, or you can go to uh, their site and download an Excel sheet that matches up with Preview's catalog what Diamond puts out for you to order your books. And that's what I do. I download the Excel sheet. I use the previews catalog that I get from DCB service and I order my books. And you just put a little one next to the thing. I'm looking at my Excel sheet right now for October and there are some incredible sales as usual. Like here's one. The discount uh, comic book service has got the uh, DC Universe Rebirth bundle number one for uh, 50% off. So that is all of these titles in the 
you know, DC Rebirth series. So it's Action Comics 961, Action Comics 970, Aquaman 12, Aquaman 13, Batman 12. Ton of comics, 19 books, half off, right off the bat. Then they've got different bundles. They've got the new Justice League Suicide Squad number one for 50% off. All these things 50% off. So if we take a look at my order, my final order, and it looks like I have 24 books that if you were to buy them at your local, it would be $83.78. And my discount, since they're 40 to 50% off, was 35 bucks. So that brings my subtotal to $48.78. Now there is a shipping fee, and it's a, a $6.95 shipping fee, and that's to get your books monthly. If you want them every two weeks or weekly, shipping is a little bit more. I've been finding monthly works out just fine for my schedule. So at the end, 24 books, 23, 24 books, because one of them was previews, is $55.73 instead of $83.78. Now that's a huge savings. Again, I've been using them for years, perfectly shipped, wrapped tight, a lot of padding, never had a problem. So check it out, Discount Comic Book Service, dcbservice.com. The scientists and engineers who run the park frantically try to get everything shut down, but only get themselves trapped in the central control when the doors lock automatically. At this point, all the robots in all the areas are killing guests and general mayhem ensues. See, they were shut down, but they have some residual power left in their batteries. Now, Brolin and Benjamin wake up from a hard night drinking and brawling, unaware of what's happening in the other areas. When the gunslinger confronts them, they don't know now that they are in mortal danger and Brolin lazily draws on the gunslinger and is easily killed. He is gunned down by Yul Brynner's character in the street. Benjamin, in total shock, is chased throughout the park by the gunslinger, trying to escape the fate of his friend. Benjamin is then chased through all the other areas of Westworld and finally makes his stand deep in the maintenance catacombs of Delos. He blinds the gunslinger by throwing acid on his face and escapes to Medieval World. Since the gunslinger is partially blinded from the acid, he cannot distinguish Benjamin's figure from a group of torches he is standing behind. Before the gunslinger can strike again, Benjamin sets him on fire with torches and the gunslinger is destroyed. So in preparing this podcast, it suddenly started to creep into my mind that the gunslinger isn't actually a villain. Sure, most dictionaries define a villain as a character in a story or play who opposes a hero or heroine, and the gunslinger does that. So he is technically a villain of the movie, but he seems to me more like a shark. There's no good or evil in his actions, he's just, he's just hunting, just doing his job per his programming. He actually reminds me of the shark from Jaws. The shark in Jaws isn't evil. He's just, I don't know, he's hungry, he's having a bad day, but he's doing what a shark does. He's not evil. There was one moment, I was actually watching the movie Westworld while I was preparing the podcast, and I did notice something. Now, we, we do see the gunslinger a few times when Brolin and Benjamin first battle him, and he seems very deadpan. He has no affect. Now, later, when he's come back online after this problem has happened, he confronts Brolin and he kills him. He then turns to Benjamin and he smiles and he says, draw. Now that's kind of the first time we saw this smile, this smirk. Now am I reading into that? He gives a little smirk in the next scene also, but then that's it. He goes back to being a stone cold robotic killer, a shark. But again, he's just doing his job being a gunslinger. This was a fun one. I've always liked this movie and I've always liked this character. I love the silveriness of the eyes. I love the fact that we don't know if this character is good or evil, if he has emotion. Now, this is very different from the Westworld that's on HBO now because these robots are much more sophisticated. And uh, again, I didn't say I said I was going to do no spoilers for that, and I'm not. If you do get a chance, go ahead and watch that. Also, you can rent the 1973 Westworld. It's what I did on Amazon. There'll be a link in the show notes on how to get a hold of that. I think it was $2.99 for the, the SD version of that. I wouldn't bother getting the HD because it wasn't shot in HD. So go ahead and get the uh, SD. It's only $2.99. I loved watching it again this Saturday. And uh, yeah, I think you'll enjoy it too. Well, I want to thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Heroes, Villains, and Sidekick show. Next week, we'll be featuring everyone's favorite bat heroine, Barbara Gordon, or Batgirl. Our theme music is by Broke for Free, and you can find links to other music from the show on our website, 
heroes, villains, and sidekicks.com. There you can listen to the show, subscribe via whichever service you use, be it iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher. And if you have the time, please leave a rating for us on iTunes when you subscribe and download the show. It'd really help us out. And if you have any recommendations for characters you'd like to learn about, just head over to the site and leave a comment. We'll be back next week with more. Take care. Take care.